Hey guys, welcome to today's video. I'm gonna be doing the assumptions tag that I have seen floating around that I find really interesting because I think we all, like we're all guilty of this. We're all guilty of seeing someone and being like, I bet their life is like this and I bet they do that and I think I know best and a lot of the times we're wrong. I cannot believe so many of you guys have these assumptions. Some of them are funny and so off base and it's to do with Halo, with my relationship, with being a YouTuber. It's just kind of all over the place. I just opened this up and I was just like, uh, what? So there's a lot. We're gonna go through as many as we can, answer the interesting ones. It's really kind of fascinating to me to see what you guys assume I am like or what my life is like because as much as I put myself out there on camera and you see the real me like this is not a fake version of me this is me you don't see all of it and there's a lot to know about a person you know because we're talking about makeup here it's not like I'm sitting here being like let's travel down memory lane and let me tell you exactly what I do every day of my life you know so I think this is kind of fun let's hop to it and talk about the assumptions you don't use Halo Beauty daily. Well, that is just not true. I cannot go without it. I went on a trip recently and I did not pack it and I was so upset and I ended up having my period and then I got one, like one breakout, which is not bad, but I haven't had that in a while. Like every now and again, it'll happen. And really, you know, Halo can help reduce inflammation. It's my supplement that I sell. I will link below the website if you wanna know more about it, but uh, it helps reduce inflammation. It does a lot of wonderful things for your skin as far as increasing hydration. It's a very balancing formula. So my skin looks good all of the time. Um, but you know, I'm human and due to travel, stress, time of year, hormones, you know, you're, you're gonna have things happen. But I was kind of amazed that I took not even a week off of it and I was like, what is happening? Like I could feel right here getting a little bit puffy. Um, right here, I had that one breakout and I wish that you could just like feel my heart and soul when I say this. I believe in that product so much. I take it every single day. You either don't know how to cook or you aren't very good at it. This is true. You guys, I suck. I suck at cooking. There are a few things that I can make and I, I try to make it like a comedy routine, like, hey, I can make toast. Like, would you like some butter on your bread? There was one time where I was trying to impress James. We hadn't been dating for more than like six months and I wanted to make spaghetti, like real, real extreme meal. Like, let me just flex my impressive powers and make you cooked meat and noodles. I have like attention issues and I was making the meat and I was like stirring it. And I was just like, God, this takes forever. I'm so bored. And I like walked away from the kitchen. James heard the shower turn on. He's like, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm just taking a quick one. I'll be right back. He's like, you can't leave meat on the stove. Like you need to like be there to stir it. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'll be back. I'll be right back. He's like, you can't do that. And I'm like, I hate cooking. I'm terrible at it. I'm so sorry. And it was just kind of this like, I'm not that girl. You were soulmates in past lives? James would think that. He always says we're two halves of the same soul and I think that is so super cute. But like whenever he leaves, even for like the grocery store, I know this is kind of dumb, but I'm just like, what if? Like if he like didn't come home or if he got in a car accident, because this happened to one of our friends. I've never talked about that. In the middle of doing YouTube, there was a really epic year of loss. And anybody that's lost someone that they've loved the recovery from that is never. You just, you're, you never recover. That piece of your heart is gone and you learn to fill your heart with more so you feel full and you feel love still, but that piece is always gone. So that was like a tough one. And then now I am like, I think about it and I'm like, he's the one and only. Like there's no one else like James. Like there's no one else. Like I will go through old journals and I will, remind myself of how mismatched I was with people. And yeah, I cared about them and the attraction was there and there were so many good things, but there were also so many toxic things and so many things that shouldn't have been that way. And James is just like, he's a tough person sometimes, but he's perfect for me. Someone says they assume that I pay for everything. 
That is a huge compliment, thank you. Uh, I pay for a lot, I pay for a lot of my own stuff. It's really funny that like when I go shopping and if I'm with James and we're married, you know, he'll have, you know, credit card, whatever. And I'm like, oh, I'm gonna get this pair of shoes and like he'll whip out the wallet and people automatically assume like, oh, like that's her sugar daddy, that's her husband. She's so taken care of and I'm like, I work every day of my life. I work 100 plus hours a week. I am hands in so many different avenues of business. So yeah, no, we're pretty 50-50, but like I don't ask permission from him. He doesn't really ask permission from me. Um, but we've been that way since day one. Like we were very open about just kind of going through life as a team. He made a joke the other day. He's like, you've, like you're outdoing me, like you come with a jet. And I'm like, yeah, I do one day, <laughs> maybe. Um, but that was like a huge compliment to me because I never wanted to be a kept woman. And you know, I'm not talking about being a mom and being with your kids because I think being a mother is one of the toughest jobs out there. It's 24 seven, you don't get a break. But in Hollywood, like there are a lot of women that just, you know, they got it on easy street and I would go crazy if I were just not doing anything, so. James does anything and everything you need whenever you ask, like in a negative way. Ooh, that was a little spicy. Before I met James, I personally had this weird thing where if someone tried to be like too much caring, like too much like opening doors, doing like all of those things, like I felt like I owed someone something and it was a really, negative feeling for me. So I've always been that person that wanted to take care of myself, that wanted to do it my way, that wanted to do the job myself because I feel like I can do it to the standard that I need, so I'd rather do it myself. And it was a lot of let go with him because he's a North Carolina boy, he's from the South, he has that Southern gentleman thing going about him, and he loves doing things like opening a door or lifting a bag or helping me with things. And that is just a part of my husband that I adore and cherish. Um, but no, he, I do not snap my fingers and he like rushes to my rescue. No way. I'm high maintenance through and through. I love all of this so much, but make no mistake. I moved to LA on my own when I was 18. I know how to take care of myself. This is actually really good. This is true, that you need your space even though you love James so much. So yes, I need to just recharge and just like get back to normal. And that's not just away from James, that's like away from everyone. I am that person that I can be alone and be totally fine with it. I find that I like that free space to write, to read, to watch the shows that I want to watch. Anyone else? I'm just like, no one. Love you guys, but I need a few hours of silence so um, that my brain can function again. You're not really married. You just say it for videos. What? You oh, were yeah. there. It's a real thing. Yeah, they did get married. Mm -hmm. I don't think it was your witness, but oh, wait. That would have been like a really elaborate video, right? right? To fake it. Just a giant production. Just a giant drones, dress, everything. I think if you go a week without makeup, you'd go absolutely crazy. This is accurate. That's true. Uh, let's see here. You had a hard life growing up. Yeah, that's also true. I did not come from wealth. Like my childhood has so many beautiful memories, but also looking back, we struggled. Like there was definite struggle there. So people think that I just was born into this lifestyle that you see here and like the nice home and the clothes and the makeup. And no, not at all. I had to work so hard for everything that I dreamed that my life would be. And I always say that, you know, I hope I inspire my audience to reach for whatever they want. And we can all want different things. I remember going to makeup designery in Burbank and getting paperwork for financial aid and wanting to go to school. And I couldn't get the four or $5,000 together to go to school and it devastated me. And I was like crying and so upset. And I was like, I'm never gonna make it as a makeup artist. I don't have family that has money that I can call and, and be like, hey, will you like hook me up right now? I'll pay you back later. I couldn't even get a loan. Like I had nothing and I didn't get to go. Um, so I had to find other creative ways to get to where I wanted to go ultimately. I would offer to do makeup for free. I would 
uh, try to build a portfolio. I kept moving forward and I, I felt in my guts that eventually, like you swing the bat enough times, you're gonna hit something. I think the mistake that people make is if you are truly gifted at something and you're good at something, don't put the bat down. This is just rude. Maybe you and James just don't want a baby because Tati, the clock is ticking. This clock has been ticking for a long time and my body is my body and it wants to do what it wants to do and maybe we will adopt. I have endometriosis, I've mentioned this so many times. Uh, it's really tough when you want to have a baby and you're not getting pregnant, you know? Like that's tough, it is really hard. And I think those the clock is ticking comments, you know, they cut deep. I'm married, I'm financially able to take care of a kid it's not happening. It is what it is. Dear God, please grant me with a baby. Oh, it's, it's tough. Do you know what's so weird though, you guys? Oh, my makeup's really nice. I don't want to mess it up today. I have dreams about my baby. Like that sounds weird, but I have dreams about my baby and like holding my baby. And like, I believe it will happen in the right time, in God's time, you know? Oh, thank you for a good one. Okay, this says you don't care about the money aspect of YouTube. You just love what you do. I have something to say that is gonna maybe shock you. The first three years that I filmed videos, I didn't earn anything. Like my AdSense, which is the um, ads that roll before videos, I was making like, $30 a month. Like it was nothing that you could live off of. It was below minimum wage for like three, three and a half years. Um, I never, you know, did the whole manager, network, sponsor. Like I just, I kind of played it a different way. I'm glad I did. Um, but I do care about money and I think that's okay. And I think I want to use my platform to tell women and men out there alike that it's okay to want to be successful. When you prioritize money above things that matter more, that's what's really screwed up. So for me, my moral code and doing the right thing is really like, that's the compass of my life. That pull to do the right thing is really, really deep with me. Doesn't mean you do it always or that you get it right always, but when you strive for that, I feel like the world opens up for you and takes care of you. I love that I'm successful on YouTube. I bought my dad a house for the holidays and that was awesome. And if I did this being like, I don't care about money, I don't care about my job, I don't care about what I earn, I couldn't do those things. I think that we need to knock the shame off of that because that's not the problem. The problem is doing the wrong thing to get there. It's not the money, it's the action and the nastiness that you might be tempted to do to get there. You're the mom of your best friend group in the best way. No, Michelle is. Oh my gosh, I'm just gonna like shout her out right now. You are the angel of my life. Like I sent her a video of Oprah talking about Gail and I was like dying laughing because it was like a cut down and I was like, this is really how I feel about you. She is the sister everybody would want. She is the friend that everybody deserves. Yeah, she's the best. She's the mom of the group. She's the most trustworthy and wise. And that's a, a compliment to her. And she is a mom. She's a mom of four. I have a really tight friends group. Um, we grew up together. Two of my girlfriends, uh, we were cheerleaders together. Other girlfriend we met in first grade, bonded over a Barbie lunchbox. Like we, we all go really way back. Oh, this is interesting. Someone is saying that they think I'm a vegetarian. I'm not. I have been many things in my life. I was a raw foodist for a minute. I've been full vegetarian before. I hit a wall, I would say early 20s where I was working out and I just, I don't know, it like overcame me that I just, I needed meat and I felt really weak without it. I'm pretty educated when it comes to nutrition. That's actually something that I wanted to do with my life. Really love makeup, really love learning about the science of the body and what makes the body work and what makes the body not work. I definitely have massive inflammation issues. I have sensitivities to soy, dairy, gluten. Gluten is the worst offender of them all. I cannot eat it without feeling like I am in the fog state of the flu for like 48 hours. And for the longest time I was undiagnosed and I would have to take a nap every day. I would have migraines and I wouldn't understand why. It was this like really bad cycle. So my diet has been different all over the place and I've had to really narrow down what made my body 
feel the best and what eliminated pain for me in my body. And right now, the way that I've done that is by eating a lot of fat. I eat a lot of avocado, coconut oil. I put butter in my coffee. I eat so much fat and it works for me. I'm healthy as can be. You've been together a long time. We sure have nine years. That your relationship with Boobra isn't the best. Well, Boobra has not been around, but Taylor is around a lot and that is my stepson and he is who i'm getting so emotional in this video um taylor is the best he's such an extension of james he's creative sweet kind loyal he is the most loyal that's the one thing i wish everyone would know about Taylor is that he will not stray or betray. I think that's such a great quality and James is the same way. Um, we're all year of the dog, interesting enough. But yeah, we're close. There was a year where we, you know, it, it was hard. It was like, I'm, hi, I'm your, your dad's special friend, <laughs> you know? And he was like 14 or 15 when I met him, he was like a little pipsqueak and he was a moody teenager and he didn't want to talk to me and I got a lot of one word answers. So to anyone that is navigating dating someone with kids, be patient. They'll open up when they're ready. Um, but I am so grateful, like I would not have it any other way. And I, ugh, I love him. Like we have a great relationship and I'm so happy about that. Does James, even have a flaw. Let's FaceTime him. Hey, baby doll. Hello. People, I, oh, thank you. Oh, you're not making this any better. Oh, why are you so cute? Um, okay, so I'm filming the assumptions tag, and one of the assumptions is that you're flawless. <laughs> <laughs> I am a man with many flaws. <laughs> Would you care to share your flaws? <laughs> no, are you kidding me? <laughs> I'm nowhere close to flawless. I think you're I, you're close to flawless. He's close. Look at him. Oh. No, no, I'm, oh. I'm nowhere close. I'm a great husband. Yep. I you, can be really irritable though. Sure can, and you drive really fast. Watch out, I don't, I, James I don't is coming. Really fast. You drive, drive so fast. Do you know what he does? He revs his <laughs> engine every time he comes home to let me know that he's home, and all I hear is this, vroom, right? That's because I have a loud car. Yeah, you love your loud car. You're a man's man. You're cute. I love you, baby. I love you too. All right, bye. Okay. You never fight or have major disagreements? Wow, then you don't know anything about marriage because all marriages, mine included. Wait, you wanna know what I argued with James about last night? So you can be madly in love and look at this person and be like, wow, you're cute. I think you're incredible. And then five minutes later, you can do something like, I don't know, I was like tinkering around with the settings on the lighting in our home. And I was like, I wanna do a Tati setting and I'm you know, doing this and we have a smart home and it's this like cool thing and I just never had the time to really do it. And James is like, no, he's like, I don't like it. And I'm like, what do you mean you don't like? He's like, I already have a setting. And I'm like, well, I want a setting too. We were like getting a little bit like up here with it. And then I realized I'm like, why are we arguing over this? This is, we're arguing about light bulbs. Like this is so stupid. And probably 15 minutes later, like I walked by him in the living room. This is so our relationship. Like I just walked by him, like stuck my tongue out and made some kind of stupid face and made him laugh. And then we're back to normal. It's impossible to be with someone for years and have it be perfect. At one moment in your life, you wanted a divorce, but you are happy you have changed your mind. Um, mm, no. I have never wanted to divorce James. <laughs> we were engaged for a very long time and we've been together for a very long time. We've been together, like I said, for nine years. Um, there was a time where I thought, I thought everything was gonna fall apart. I really did. Um, we were just going through it with him losing his mom and very suddenly losing his very best friend. And his very best friend was gonna be his best man in our wedding. And he just, he was really emotionally detached and I did not deal with that well. I was dealing with all of my stuff and he was dealing with so much grief and the kind of grief that I can't even get into detail, but it was unimaginable. And of course that affected him. So, whew. Thank God for good therapy. Thank God for a heart that wants to understand. Like the biggest thing that I can tell any couple out there, if you do find these hiccups, whether they are big, life-changing, life-altering hiccups, be quick to forgive. When you're holding on to that, like that anger and the need to be right, 
you lose. Because if you care about someone, you need to let go of that and you need to let them feel loved and be right. And when they mirror that back to you and you start getting closer to each other, that's powerful. Uh, if you don't take sponsors, how do you make cash? I don't think a lot of people know, but I get between uh, 25 and 30 million views a month. That is a lot. Um, I'm very, very proud of that. And I've been able to maintain that throughout the years and you know, put ads in my videos. And I'm so grateful when you guys watch them and don't skip over them because that is how I earn my living and how I pay my editor and how I am able to do all of this and how I was able to invest in Halo without raising capital. Like I was able to do it on my own. It's shocking how much money YouTubers can make. I am in this for the long haul though and I'm not interested in making a quick buck. I'm interested in making a great career and looking back and being really, really proud. So yeah. You don't have a job outside of YouTube. You suck all the money from YouTube's Well, that was really vulgar. Uh, Leilani, Hannah, vulgar, nasty. I refuse to feel shame about earning money from YouTube. I do a lot of great things with the money that I do earn, but I kind of do have another job actually. Uh, I have several of them. So I'm the operating CEO of Halo and I'm not a puppet CEO. I'm not just a name on, you know, the website or social. I am very hands-on in developing everything A to Z, um, in strategy with the company, in what's going on, in the directions that we want to pursue. I make big decisions, you know, Halo could be in stores right now. There have been a lot of offers. We were gonna be in Sephora, Ulta if we wanted to, but said no. I do so much work behind the scenes. And so I guess I do have a second job and a third, maybe a fourth that maybe we'll talk about one day. Um, but yeah, I love my work, so suck that. I have an editor, yes I do. But I edited a thousand videos myself before I hired an editor and that was one of those things that in the community for a while, it was a very shameful thing to have anyone help you. And it kind of had to be like, if you're great at this, you're the only one that can do it. And I felt that pressure for a long time and I'm so happy that I let go of that because I love having a creative team where I'm still in there, you know, making notes and having my input and ideas and it's very collaborative what I create here and how it ends up being the final video. But I have help and I have a team and they're so talented and so great. It says YouTubers are kind of famous, but not like paparazzi famous, but they reap the benefits of fame. I actually think it's worse for YouTubers. You know, um, celebrities don't get mauled the same way that YouTubers do because there's just this breakdown of the wall. I'm not playing a character in a film, I'm me. So in many ways, you guys know about my life and my dog and what I do and who I am. And so you feel this closeness with me and I love that. So um, it makes the access to come up to me feel very comfortable and I think that's the way it feels for a lot of YouTubers with their subscribers. Cause we love you, like I love you guys and it's different. So there's a different kind of access and it's grown now to the point where it can be a little crazy. Like I had a note passed to me on a plane from the flight attendant when I was on a plane last. Um, I told you guys, it's been freaking me out that when I sit in my car with Puka, cause if James is running in somewhere, um, I'll sit in the car with Puka and people will come up to the car and knock on the window. Uh, it's grown into something I never saw coming really. Like I never in my mind was like, wow, one day, from sitting on my bed and talking to the camera, people will knock on my window of my car. And oh my gosh, go out in public with James Charles or Jeffrey for two minutes, whoo. Happy birthday, dear Tati. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. It can be lonely sometimes. You know what? It actually can. There's a lot of uh, backstabbing and jealousy in this industry. It's very competitive and people like to front face and say, there's room for everyone and no one needs to be competitive and we all love each other. People can take from you and move on and then you're kind of like, wait, what? I would rather have a handful of loyal, meaningful, true relationships than like a bunch of BS, you know? Oh, this is a weird one. Um, for Halo, that it's not meant for women of color. 
That is not true. Halo works for anyone. It's working from the inside out. It doesn't matter what ethnicity you are, what gender you are. The hair, skin, nails, and kiwi, the two that we have available right now, are for any and every one. Obviously, check with your doctor if you have a health condition and you are taking other medicines. Um, that's what I would recommend with any supplement. But it is absolutely, like we've had so much success from women of color. Like, go look at the Instagram. The business is doing greater than you ever thought it would. Yes. It is doing so well. It is shocking. I'm incredibly proud of that. And I'm not someone that's like boasting it around and doing tons of interviews and like me, 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 me. Like maybe as a business we should and maybe as we grow, I will. But I could stop filming if I wanted to. If I wanted to just work on Halo, I could. We have been that successful in our first year and things continue to get better and it is just like a dream come true and it's helping people and that's the best part is that it works and I will never come out with a product, you guys, that is garbage. Uh, you wish it could be FDA approved. The FDA does not see supplements as medicine, so FDA does not approve supplements. However, we work with a lab that abides by you know, FDA standards, and that's pretty typical within the supplement industry as well. Uh, you do Halo for love, not for money. 100% both. I love building, and I wanna do it without big corporation coming in and managing and controlling and telling me what to do and what not to do, because the behind the scenes of cosmetic skin nutraceuticals, a lot of it is very ugly. Like your mind is blown. You know, you go over to some of the factories overseas and they are not cute. Like even with Halo, I chose to pay more money for each bottle to be manufactured in a dust-free facility. And that means that there's no particles and dust going in the bottle. Now think about that. Like you have to find a specific facility that does that. And with cosmetics, it's a lot worse, like even the Claire's thing with asbestos being found in their children's makeup. So dangerous, so nasty. I think it's time for a change with the cosmetic industry and with the regulation of cosmetics. There's a lot of people who work under you for Halo, but we just don't know it. I do have a lot of people working with me um, as far as the lab is concerned, as far as the chemists formulating, doing all of that, but they're not full-time employees that are with me day to day. You know, we have a customer service team. We have a social media manager who is so phenomenal. Um, she does a lot of what you guys see over on the Halo IG. She's wonderful. Her name's Alex. I have a small team, but they are hardworking and we work well together, but we're, we're a tight, compact team. There's not a ton of people. I really, I should end this video. This has gone on forever. Um, okay, uh, new products very soon. Very, very soon. It was almost ready to go and we're just like taking care of a few last minute things and I'm really excited for you guys to see what's next. So I'm gonna end things here. If you wanna go check out more about Halo, you can go to the IG, Twitter. Um, here are some gorgeous before and afters and I will put the link in below in the description box. You guys, this was so fun. This was like therapy for me and I hope it allowed you to get to know me a little bit better and ditch some of the assumptions. Um, but some of them were right, so there you go. All right, I love you guys so much. If you have not yet subscribed, make sure that you do that. Ring the bell so you are notified of my upcoming videos. I'm here Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and I hope to see you guys again soon. All right, go have a good one, and thank you so much for watching. Mwah.